There's no other way to say it. The Bears offense is terrible. They're towards the bottom of the league in points, in red zone, in third down. They were 4 for 14 on third down last night, failed to score in two red zone trips. Their defense outscored their offense last night, so it's a disaster. And let me bring the crew in here. And, Jeff, Saturday, you know all about playing on really good offenses. If you were to put your finger on what the biggest problem for the Chicago offense is right now, where are you putting it? There's no plan for protection, Greeny. I mean, this, this is as ugly as it gets. They don't have any plan of how to protect Nick Foles or if it was Trubisky or whoever is going to be the quarterback in Chicago. They, they don't understand how to get things blocked up. And when you look at last night, it, it told you everything. They can rush. The Rams could rush for and get pressure on Foles because he didn't know where to go with the ball, and they would green dog, which means bring the linebacker late if the running back goes to help to add on that fifth rusher. And again, nobody understood. There was a great example of this when they were backed up in their own end zone. They missed. They had two guys trying to block three. We call that happy hour, right? Two for three. Foles throws. The receiver double moves. Doesn't get there in time. Just miss. Well, guess what? You can't just miss in the NFL. You have to have a plan. You know teams are going to bring pressure. You understand what everybody else's philosophy is defensively against you. But they're not answering the call. So, at some point, Peyton Manning used to talk about this all the time. He cared as much about protection as he did route combination. And he would talk about protection first. Why? Because without protection, all those great plays don't mean a thing, Greeny. At some point, you got to protect that guy for three to four seconds so he can put the ball where it needs to go and go make plays on the back end. Just really disappointed because it's like it's the same tape each week and it doesn't get better. They had 36 dropbacks, nine play action, 18 of pressure. You ain't going to win in the NFL that way. Now, it's easy to ignore so much of the season because they're winning games. But last night on national TV, it just looks awful. Greg, how much of this is on the quarterback? How much of it is on Nick Foles? Well, a, a decent amount. And if they're going to continue to have Nick Foles as their starting quarterback, they got to influx some, some creativity. And if you look at the other side, they're doing naked, they're doing boots, because Nick Foles is a dying breed. The statuesque, immobile quarterback is a thing of the past. And right now, this offensive line is struggling. There's no denying that. Jeff just hit on it. They are really, really bad in protection. You're going against Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, who's really mad with the chip on his shoulder and a pretty dang good pass rushing group. And yet, you don't mix the snap count. You don't change the launch point by getting your quarterback out of the pocket. And honestly, guys, if they're not willing to change, the guy that gives them the best chance to win is Mitch Trubisky. Because at least he gives you a chance offensively because of his legs. He can create, he can run around, and yeah, he might throw a couple picks, but you know what, so be it. At least we're getting looks. Because last night, the way Foles was just stationary in the pocket, they're not going to be able to beat top level, top defense, top pass rushing teams, and that's what they're going to see in the playoffs. So ultimately, they got to get things figured out, or they need to really strongly consider going to the more mobile option of their two quarterback options. That's an interesting, well then, Graziano, let me quickly go to you as my insider. Any reason to mm. think that they're considering that? Other than what we saw in the game last night, just watching it, no, the, the Bears coaching staff does not want to go back to Mitchell Trubisky. And this is a significant indictment on Trubisky and how they feel about him because, to Greg's point, he is a mobile quarterback. He's a mobile quarterback that just three years ago they traded up to select with the second overall pick in the draft. And now they're watching Nick Foles, you know, no time to throw, losing games, and, and at this point they're not willing to go back to the high pick. So... You have a team that's 5-2. and two. They've managed to pull off some wins. They're playing great defense. But I really think, Greeny, that we're going to get to the end of this season and we're going to look at some games. There's always a game or two that stands out that's weird. How did the Bears beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? That's going to be one we're looking at in December going, man, that's a weird loss <laughs> right. for Tampa Bay because this Bears team has <laughs> yeah. given up more points than it's, uh, than it's scored, and that's no recipe for a winning team. Well, so Swagoo, come on in here as my cleanup hitter, and, and let's put it to you as big picture as we can. For whatever else is going on here, this is a 5-2 and two football team. And as Graziano just said, they did beat Tampa Tom and the Buccaneers on a Thursday night. Is Chicago a playoff team in the NFC in your mind, Marcus Spears? Hell no. And listen, this, is, this, this record is fool's goal. All right, <laughs> Mr. Trubisky played out of his mind against the Lions and threw three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. For one quarter, he was, he was great and significant. They beat, they beat the... Um, they, they had an opportunity against Tampa because Tampa imploded. We all saw what Tampa did. They had 40 penalties almost in the damn game, and it still was a close game. 
The problem with Chicago is all you had to do was look at the opposite of what they were last night. Sean McVay, shifts, motions, jet sweeps, changing leverage on the line of scrimmage. Nick Foles, Matt Nagy, line up, stay in the same formation, run the same plays I'm able to evaluate That's right. all throughout the year. That's the difference. So at, at any rate, this team wasn't going to win anything of significance anyway, but the defense is why we thought they could make a run. You ain't winning no championship just on defense anymore. Those days are long gone in the NFL. There's the headline in tomorrow's Chicago Sun-Times. Marcus Spears says, hell no. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.